Hello and welcome to the Mindful Millionaire YouTube channel. I'm so very happy that you're joining me. Today I am interviewing Ian Garlic. Ian is talking about how to create a whole new kind of testimonial from your customers that give prospects a better understanding of the work you do, of the transformation that you provide, and whatever service or product that you're offering. I love this conversation because I have used Ian's strategies in my own business as part of a launch, and the success that came with it was so astounding. It blew my mind. I had no idea that just by changing the way the conversation that we're having with our clients to create a video testimonial, and you'll learn as you dive into this that it's really not a testimonial, but when you do that, the impact for the people that you're trying to work with out there in the world that you may not have even met yet is substantially different than a lot of other sales strategies. And it's very holistic, it aligns with my values, it gives people insight into what it would be like to work with you. And they can see if you could potentially be a good fit based on the stories that they're hearing from past customers. So this is for the business people, definitely. Um, if you've got a business, you're interested in starting a business, I would suggest listening to this conversation. I know you're gonna take a lot out of it. Enjoy. Ian, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. I love your work and I'm so excited to dive into your, your new book and, and how you help business owners in better positioning themselves with prospects, which is something that I know my audience and those who own businesses cannot get enough of. And I just want to say that part of the reason I wanted to have you on the show was because I met you a few years ago and I learned about what you were doing and was able to put it into practice immediately. And it really helped me with a launch. And I'm excited to dive into why it was so helpful. And maybe I'll be asking you some questions because you weren't coaching me at the time. I just heard a few of the things that you were doing and I was like, I got it. I'm going to use this. Let's go. And now you've got a book about it. And so this is really exciting because I think people are going to take away so much from what you teach. But can you tell us a little bit more about how you came into the work that you do today? Sure. I, um, uh, I, I, you know, as I talk about in the book, I've always kind of been fascinated with marketing and the mechanics behind it and slowly realized that it was, and I grew up in a storytelling household and marketing household. I didn't know it as much when I was younger, but then I ever looked back, I'm like, oh, um, and as I was writing this book, I really realized it. But, you know, as I started to, when I worked in New York and I started in, in legal marketing, I realized that everyone was different, but I'm like, how can we really portray how different they are really quickly? And I, a couple of things happened. One was I realized how different everyone's story was, but we needed to get that story in front of people. Then Google bought YouTube and I'm like, oh, we can have this high intent thing where people are searching for an answer and then have a customer talking about them or have them talking about their story right at that moment. And, you know, we really got into YouTube marketing almost 15 years ago now. Um, and that was the beginning of it. Now, I did a lot of other stuff, but it always kind of started coming back to all the answers started with in customer stories and client stories. All the answers to almost every one of our business issues is, is somewhere in your customer stories and interviewing them and asking them and, um, on top of it, when you do the stories in the right way and you produce these stories, there's a lot of science behind it that I've done in the research. You make the most powerful marketing mechanism there is. Um, and so we've we've slowly evolved into it and the agency evolved. And one of the things, you know, because of that, I started to always start with customer stories. And that's why we became videocasestory.com is because even though we do entire YouTube strategies, we do entire, you know, we do 10 different types of videos. We do YouTube SEO. It always starts with customer stories. And um, yeah, and, and so uh, people kept asking and asking more for it. And that's, we've developed the process and always been process driven. So I wanted to make the process better and better and better. And that's how the book came about too. It's not new to get customer testimonials or to have people share what their experiences are in 
working with your product. And what comes to mind is like TV commercials where they'll bring people on, right? And real life people talking about their experience of you know driving the truck or what have you. But there's a twist here that you touched upon in your work that I'd love to make it really clear, like what's the difference between a customer testimonial and what you're talking about? Yeah, I, you know, a testimonial is generally about the product or the service. And it's not about that person and their story and the transformation, right? There's, it's, which is a subtle difference. But, you know, it, it, we've like one of my favorite case stories was a criminal defense case uh, where this man was falsely accused. And the, like, it's still like, it gives me goosebumps to even think about it. I've shown this so many times and watched it so many times. And this man's life was transformed and it got tons of view time, but we don't talk about the client, my clients, the law, law firm, Horowitz, uh, Mark Horowitz, um, in, until like five, six minutes in. And, but it captures people's attention so much and made them feel something. And I realized how powerful it was. And then, you know, and that's the difference. Because right away, if you'd been like, Mark's the best, Mark, you know, saves everyone's lives, Mark, blah, 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 it, it kind of turns people off. But if you have this amazing story, you have to dig for the stories. And if you ask for a testimonial, they're going to, you know, if, if, if you ask for a testimonial for Mindful Millionaire, they're going to talk about the book, right? But if you ask for the story of how it transformed their lives, you're developing something powerful. Because that's what we all want is transformation. But we want to know it's someone like us. And we want to know that the problem was like ours. And that's where a great story comes in. So the mindset is big, I think, is what's coming up to me. Because having done some of this with my clients, people enter in. So my client, I want to interview them. They enter in thinking that they've only ever seen a testimonial. They don't know anything different than that. They know how to say, Lisa's great. She did great work with me. She helped me in this, this, and this area. But what you're saying is that's not enough. It kind of turns people off. It feels a little rigged is my, is my opinion, mm -hmm. especially after yeah. learning about your process. But the mindset that the customer has is completely different when you're doing the interviews that you are helping your clients to do and teaching about in the book, right? They're totally different. The mindset isn't this conversation is all about Lisa. If I'm the one, you know, having mm -hmm. somebody be interviewed, it's like, actually, this is all about you. And that's even hard for some people to get their head around because we're not used to talking about ourselves, especially if you haven't, you know, done any of that kind of thing before. I've written a book. I've talked about myself a lot. Like <laughs> I'm yeah. used to it, but a lot of people aren't used to it. So how do you help people on the, on the side of the case story, even become comfortable with telling their story? I think it, it's, it's a lot of it's framing, right? If you don't ask for a testimonial and say, can you share your story with us and know that it's going to be a conversation? I think that's, that's a huge piece too, because so many people want to check off that testimonial box and send out a software or just get the questions and ask, have someone answer questions. But if it's a conversation and just say, hey, you're going to have a conversation with someone that cares about your story and wants to know more about it, people can do that. It's, it's, and you make it really easy for them. It's like, hey, it'd be a few minutes sharing your story. And we'll ask you some questions and you have to have nothing prepared. Because in their mind, like you said, testimonial means I have to have something prepared. I have to be great. I have to at least it transform my life. And I want to make sure I do the best job possible for her. And then they're like, oh my God. And then they prepare something. And it's like, no, come unprepared. Just talk about your story. You'll be great. And really put them at ease. And then on top of it, you know, I think this is a very subtle, but one of the most critical things is the person interviewing has to care about that person they're interviewing. And it seems obvious, but it can't be like, I'm just doing my job. It needs to be, I care about the person on their side of this because they can feel it. We feel it. And if you don't feel that, then they're, they're going to close up. They're not going to share their story. So I think those are two of the keys. It's, and it's, like it's like anything in life. It's fundamental. It seems simple, but you, people want to skip over it. And that's the way you've got to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have not spoken, but I think I sent you an email about this 
um, a ways back when I when I tried this. But one of the things that blew me away was these conversations. Now I know you as an agency will hire interviewers and other people are involved in doing this, but I've got a small business. I don't have anybody that knows my customers as well as I do. I was making it up on the fly, right? So I'm doing these interviews and I didn't know what to expect, but what I wanted to say to you and to everyone listening is these conversations were some of the most poignant, helpful, powerful conversations I had ever had with my clients that I didn't even know I should be having with my clients until I just said, hey, can I interview you about your life and about what was going on in your life? And and again, there's so much more in the book and I hope people get it. But I just wanted to say to you that it blew my mind what happened next when I started asking questions from this perspective. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. I, I love that. Thank you so much because that, that's what I want. I mean, it's, it's you're helping people, you're transforming their lives and that transformation is going to help someone else as well and transform and also help you on those bad days, right? I have bad days and it's like, you can remind you, oh, you do good work when someone says, this doesn't work. And you can watch the story of some of really helping someone. Well, I'll go even further because what I found by asking these questions is things that had happened for clients that I didn't even know about that, that had changed their lives in ways that they never, I was not asking that question. So I didn't get that feedback here I am getting it on filmed, you know, on a recording that I could share with other people, but I'm hearing for the first time, the impact of the work in a way that I hadn't totally received yet. Like it allowed me to receive and feel like I was doing better work than I even knew just by using this platform of the, of the questions that you're encouraging us to ask. I love that. Thank you. That's great. I mean, that's, it's, yeah, we just, I think we get so busy and that's what I talk about a lot in the book is checking the box, right? We're checking the box and getting the stuff done, get the stuff done instead of st standing back and going, what am I really doing here? I mean, really, what am I doing for these people? And yeah, you, they make more money and they have more money, but what does that mean for them? And how does that transform how they feel about their lives? And I mean, that's, I mean, to me, that's the most rewarding thing in the world is you know and it's rewarding to hear you say that uh, it, it, because it's it, it's it, it's what we're here for it's like when you serve someone at that level and that level of transformation i don't think there's much better there there's something coming to mind because it's been a while since i did these but one of the things would often happen is people would say and you'll never get this in a testimonial that's why i was so blown away by it but you people will start to say oh i need to tell you about what's happening in my relationship with my son, for example. And they'll say things that have happened, but from the lens of like a really important relationship. Like the other day, they told me that this, this, and this is better as a result of the things that I've done to change. And I'd be like, oh my gosh, that would never come out in a testimonial. But by the questions that are being asked, they're relaying a reflection that is like deeply meaningful to them from other people in their life. Again, you wouldn't get that by asking anything other than these questions. Yeah. And, and then you know, what I love about that is now you have someone's real why and what they want. Right. Money for most people, there's, you know, a small portion of the population that is truly money driven, you know, really money driven. It's all about that number. But for most of them, it's they want something that they're not even sure what they want. And now you can really speak to that to potential clients like, you know, this is going to transform your relationship with your kids. And, you know, here's the story of someone that does. And then they're like, oh, that's what I really want. It was the legacy. Right. Or mm -hmm. I want at that time. And I love that. That's so cool that that happened. The other thing, and I think a lot of my listeners can resonate with this because they're coaches and they're mentors and they're helping people. And like for me, people come to me because 
they're interested in having a better relationship with money oftentimes. But what they don't realize is all the ramifications of how their relationship with money is affecting their life, their personal relationships, their, their bank account, their, um, the way that they see themselves. And one of the things that happens with these, these conversations is for me, the outcome wasn't as defined as what I may have thought. And so when you would go through and you would watch these different case case stories, people sharing their, their experiences, they had different outcomes. And it wasn't as like defined as maybe I had thought it should be. But what I saw on the other side is that people don't just make decisions because of like, the logic, like I want more money. There's a huge portion of the decision being made emotionally. And all it takes is a couple stories, even if they're different and they're not exactly what the person wants, but there's the sincerity that's involved of like, wait a minute, if they've helped all these people get the thing that they wanted and it's different, I can work with this person and know that it's going to be suited for me. And I, I have had trouble communicating what I do because the outcome is so variable. Yeah. It, it really helps you. It helps you differentiate yourself, right? Because it's, you know, it, otherwise everyone that's talking money is just talking ROI, return on investment, like how much ROI is. And, and for some people, it's like, it just becomes a mix and it's like, oh yeah, there's like this 1% difference or whatever. And yeah, what, there's a lot of people driven by it. But when you find those, like find, find those variable outcomes, you speak to the human and that in the emotion. And that's, I mean, emotion is what drives, uh, drives all decision-making. And then we back it up with logic. When you decided to write this book, and I know you're, you're calling it testimonials that land the big fish what was your intention? Like, what were you hoping to be able to do? And there's probably many goals that you have, but I just love to hear, like, what were you trying to do with the reader, your audience, the people that you even work with now already? I want people to realize that it's so much, it's such a huge opportunity to transform their business and their life by listening to their customers and I want them to make it a priority and have a framework around it because I think so many people are like oh I'm just gonna go shoot a video testimony if they check it out like check the box thing or they don't think it's that important I'm gonna get around to it and it needs to be an absolute priority and you know I talk a lot about Walt Disney in it and like he made it a priority till the day he died of listening to his customers and like getting out there he he did it like to your point he got out there. He had people eavesdrop on them. He wasn't sending out surveys. Um, and it's, you know, I think it's how important because it can transform sales. It transforms marketing. It transforms operations. It transforms how you view your business, like, like you were just saying. Um, but also have a framework that I've developed for getting this out because this is 15 years of framework that I've developed. It's not like, oh, I, I did this once. It's like constant improvement and constantly evolving it but it is if you stick to it it will give you so much insight into your business and then give you a tool to attract more of those people and that's what that was my goal is like i want to transform as many people's lives and businesses as possible because especially small business like yourself it's the heart of everything and you're really helping people and it helps you and and that makes me feel good do you expect that people will, some will read it, be able to take it and run with it. Like the intention is that they can actually start to create these case stories right away on their own in the cases that that fits. But then are there also folks where they might read it, they see the value of it, and then they want to work with you or they want to take it, you know, get some help with it. Like, how does that work? Oh yeah, 100%. I mean, there'll be a portion of the population, take it and run with it. There are other marketers, I want them to make this a part of it. I want to train other marketers, make this a part of their content and how they, you know, how they engage people. But also, of course, yeah, I'd love to have a few clients, but I want people coming through the door, understanding the process, understanding the value. So when they come to work with us, they, they want someone who's, you know, knows it and knows it, how to do it and cares about their business and has a process and they understand it. And I'm like, I mean, because I have that with a lot of businesses. I'm like, I now know what you do. And I don't want to do it. 
I want someone who's going to do it for me, right? I could probably figure out how to fix my boat engine. I don't want to do that. I want a boat engine that runs all the time so I can go on the lake and enjoy it anytime I want. Same thing here. If you want, like I gave as much detail as possible without overwhelming someone. They can, like, it's great. You said that after a few uh, talks, this is like really detailed process, but you need to go through the process and not skip over to just the questions and go through intention of what you want to accomplish with it and plan it out. And that's why I also want people to realize is that they don't skip the process if they do it themselves. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense because it is uh, a way of thinking. You're, the way I would look at what I've learned from you is it's the difference, right? Of like giving someone the fish dinner or you know teaching them how to fish in this case you aren't just trying to help people make better case stories. You're also helping them think about all the ways that those can impact their own practice, the people that they find, all the different ways that it could Im improve their business and the success of their business. Like you're learning a whole new language in which to operate from. Oh, 100%. And you know, I, in video on top of it is such an amazing tool if it's used properly. And I've seen it used so improperly in a lot of businesses. And I think there's so much noise about YouTube because I, I firmly believe YouTube's not going away. But a lot of people are going down the YouTube subscriber influencer path. And that's not what's going to make you money and get you the right people right away. It's this process. And I've used it for years. And it has helped people connect with their clients. That's why one of the things I love hearing from our clients and anyone that's used it is people walk through the door and they feel like they know us already and are rich, ready to work with us. And I think that's one of the best things too. It's like, if you can have that, 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 that makes for like the right person is walking through the door and you can just perform really well for them and get better case stories. That makes for a business you love. And I, I love helping people do that. Yeah. Well, because when you're watching several of these stories, you're watching the videos, you're getting familiarity with like, do I see myself as that person who's telling their story? Is there enough overlap with how their values are playing out and the other aspects so you can see yourself or not in their shoes? And then you're also able to gain a sense of familiarity with the person. Like in the case of, of, the ones I did, I took myself out, but there would be times where people would say, Lisa, or you, you know, so they probably could deduce that I was interviewing folks. But what I was blown away by is when people did come and decide to work with us and do our programs, they hit the ground running. Like I didn't have to explain who I was or what was going to happen. Like those sold people on what it was that I was doing. And it saved a lot of time, a lot of energy and the camaraderie and the feeling like I'm more of an introvert. And sometimes it's hard for me when brand new people come into my business because I'm like, I'm a little shy and you don't want to be that way. But like, there was no shyness. There was just this sense of like, I'm so excited to be working with you. I can see like this is coming from the person who who hired me. And I don't know that that had ever happened in a launch in the way that it did as a result of using these. I love it. Thank you so much. That's amazing. That's I mean, that's exactly my goal with it is like for you to get that feeling. And that's such a good feeling. And, you know, what? that's that's incredible. I appreciate it because you forget sometimes that it's actually working. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. I know that feeling. So what would you suggest that people do having listened to this conversation? What's their next step? I mean, obviously pick up the book. We're going to give them the link to, um, well, you're going to tell us the link, but we'll also put that in the show notes. What's next? Uh, yeah. So testimonialbook.com slash MM. We'll give you some extra bonuses in there. Um, you're going to get the tool, the case story tackle box, which is a tool I developed for housing your stories, how to collect them. Um, you're going to get uh, the ways to use these. We have 60 plus ways to use the case stories. Um, and you're going to a whole host of other things, access to a, a workshop that I'm doing as well. Um, and if you get this, you know, the, we're going to be doing a 99 cent sale. So get it. Um, and once you get it, the biggest thing I can tell people, and I say it right at the beginning, is make a commitment at least 30 minutes a week, whether it's just reading the book to your case stories. I was just talking to another um, company and uh, I'm like, you, you just need 30 minutes with your team. 
talking about your wins, talking about the stories, talking about the people you're helping, how you're going to collect them. I give you the framework for it, but dedicate the time to it. It's, you know, it, there's so many stories in there of the people, the businesses that have. If you dedicate the time to the stories, I promise you, your business will transform, your life will transform, and you'll transform more lives too. That's awesome. Well, I love it. It definitely helped me. I'm excited to share this. Thank you for the gifts for everyone. Um, we'll make sure that they can go to the show notes as well to get that. And I, I appreciate you sharing, Ian. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it, Lisa. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get all the latest updates of meditations, tapping videos, uh, different coaching calls that I share on the YouTube channel. And also be sure to take my money and chakra quiz. This shows you where you might be out of balance as it pertains to money and exactly what you can do for your next steps.